So far, we already learned about two different algorithms for query processing. The first was external merge sort. I did separate videos on that. And the other algorithm was grouping with aggregation. We also had a video on that. In this video, we will look at how to combine those two algorithms. Of course, a trivial way of combining those two algorithms would be you first run external merge sort. And once you are done, you run grouping with aggregation. In this case, of course, it makes a lot of sense to run sort-based grouping with aggregation. That's a straightforward way of combining those two algorithms. However, there are way more effective ways of combining those two algorithms. And that is what we look at in this video. So let's assume we want to compute something like that. Our query is select number count star from input group by number. That is what I want to compute in the following examples. So I just want to count the occurrences for each number. How often does each number occur? So you see it already here. For instance, three occurs twice, six occurs three times and so forth. That is the result I want to have. I want to have a count for each of the numbers that occurs in the input. So how do we compute the result to that query? Let's first do it in the trivial way. Let's compute it by running the two algorithms step by step. So we first run external merge sort and afterwards we run sort based grouping with aggregation. That is depicted here. So in the first Part. We run all of this, we produce a sorted eight page run in this example, that is the final output of the sort operation. And once this has been written to disk, we can read it again and perform sort based grouping and aggregation here, which means we read it into my memory again, run the sort based grouping and aggregation and produce an output. So that's depicted here. I read it again, run the grouping and aggregation, and then I output it to disk again. So here is where sort based grouping and aggregation sits. Okay, so that is one way of doing that. However, it has some severe drawbacks, especially if you investigate the amount of IO. So recall again, for producing the initial runs, we have to read the input and write it. That happens here. So the input pages are all read once and written once in pass zero. That happens here. The same happens in pass one. I read all of the input here, the two four page runs, merge them in my memory and write them out to disk again. So again, this is one total read, one total write, one total read, one total write. And then here the same thing happens. I read it here again and write it to the output. So overall, if you do the math, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Or in other words, three times an entire read of all data, three times an entire write of all of the data. That is a lot of IO and that is a performance problem, definitely. So how to fix that? Well, one obvious way of fixing that is to combine sort-based grouping and aggregation with the last merge. That is what we do here. So while merging, so rather than writing the output to disk here, as depicted here, here I'm writing to disk, I don't have to do that. I can directly feed it into the sort-based grouping and aggregation algorithm. That is what happens here. Sort-based grouping and aggregation happens exactly here, which means I never write a final sorted sequence of the input data to disk. I rather directly write out the grouped and aggregated output that I desire. So this makes a lot of sense in situations where I already know I never require the fully sorted sequence. I just generate the sorted sequence in order to be able to perform sort-based grouping. And that is what I assume here. So all of the sorting is just done here in order to be able to perform sort-based grouping later on. So there's no need to write out the sorted sequence of input data. I can directly feed it into the sort based grouping. And what do I gain? Well, it's still one read here. It's still one write here in pass zero. It's still one read here and it's still one write here. However, 
So this is only two times reading the data, two times writing the data. If you go back to this, here we had an additional read and write here. If you do a strict step-by-step -step computation of the sort-based group in the aggregation, we get rid of those read and write operations. That's already a huge gain, especially if you think about big data sets that you might be processing here. However, there's an additional effect. And we already kind of saw it here. So depending on the specific grouping keys, the specific aggregation operation you do, you might save some additional I.O. because typically the grouped and aggregated output is smaller than the original output. Here you don't see much of an effect. So in terms of pages, we still have eight pages here, but potentially the data here might be smaller. So actually, typically this write operation doesn't mean that you write as much data as you're reading. Typically, this is less data that you're writing here. And the same holds here already. So, so this write operation here is typically somewhat smaller. So in other words, this W, let's name it W prime. And then we should also name this one W prime because it's exactly the same size in terms of IO. So if we do the mass again, so what we see is we have three times an entire read of the input data, two times an entire write of the input data, and this additional writing of the output, which is typically smaller than the input data set for grouping and aggregation. So if you examine online grouping, what we improve upon is we save one additional write, one additional read. Of course, we still have this W prime, which is the final output. We can't avoid that. Okay, that's one way of improving that. So what we did was we push down, that's another way of phrasing that. So if you go back here, we have the sort based grouping and aggregation. This is the algorithm we, we are running here afterwards. So what I did was I pushed down this operation into the merge tree of external merge sort. So rather than doing it outside, I pushed it into the merge tree to be executed here. That is what we did here. And if you do that, the question arises, why not push it down further? Why not push it to other merge levels? So why restrict it to grouping and aggregating it here? We could also already group and aggregate at other places in the merge tree. So how would that look like? And that is depicted in this slide. So here I already run some grouping and aggregation here, some grouping and aggregation here. And of course I keep the grouping and aggregation here. So I have three points in time where I run sort-based grouping. Maybe let's write it down. So three points in time. So whenever you generate a run, that happens here. One run is generated, be it quick sort, be it replacement selection. Once you have the sorted sequence, you feed it directly into sort-based grouping and aggregation. And the output of that is written to disk. And you can do the same here for each and every run. Once you have the sorted output, you feed it into sort-based grouping, which almost requires no memory. And whatever the output of that is, you put it to disk. And then again, you keep the final merge. So at every merge, at every run generation, you run sort-based grouping. And then you see these effects again, you have in terms of read and write operations, you have the effect where well, you have to read this. But then here already, this can be smaller than the original input potentially. So maybe this is, yeah, and then it may differ, of course, across the different runs. Yeah? So this is a W prime prime, maybe this is a W prime prime prime. And all of these W's with primes may be potentially smaller, hopefully, than the original W. So here again, we then also have different read costs. If this is smaller, then the original W, here we have a read prime prime, here we have a read prime prime, which are all hopefully smaller. So all of this W prime, W prime prime, W prime prime prime, are typically smaller than the W. Of course, you can also construct grouping and aggregation functions that are bigger. So this is for instance a case. So if the number of groups is equal to the number of input tuples, for instance, assume you group on the primary key column, then you typically end up in a situation where this does not hold. 
but for any decent grouping and aggregation function typically those are smaller which means here already you save in terms of write I.O. The data you write is smaller than the input data and then of course you also improve upon for further mergers because the read costs decrease here. You have to read as much data as you wrote out here so the read costs here are also decreased so that's a huge gain. So whenever this is possible so actually what we're seeing here is a similar effect as in compression because the query we want to compute the occurrences for each number here is very similar to run length encoding in this case. So the effects we are seeing here, this early grouping and aggregation, this is all very similar to run length encoding if you think back about what that was about. So here we just, if we had sorted sequences, the number of occurrences of each symbol rather than the list of symbols. It has a similar effect as compressing the original data, which is another thing you can do in I.O. in order to save I.O. we learned about. Whenever you do any I.O., be it on disk, be it in the network, you first compress it before writing it out and you have to be careful to not spend too many CPU cycles on that. So grouping and aggregation here is a similar effect as the output data here is hopefully smaller than the input we save some I.O. and therefore we gain performance. So early grouping with aggregation has a similar effect as compression. And how dramatic these effects can be depend a lot on the specific grouping and aggregation functions. The fewer the number of groups, of course, the higher the gains. So here's an extreme example. If you do not group at all, but you just do the aggregation function, that is depicted here. We just do a count and then of course here what the output is a single tuple with this count which is 8 in this example. Here it's also 8. Again you merge them in the second round and then you get 16. That of course is an extreme example of saving almost all of the I.O. that is required. And you probably would run this differently. You just keep the single variable in main memory and add it up. But in a realistic case where you have only few groups, for instance, assume you had a query where you do something like this, select number. So that's a similar query as I showed in the beginning, but you divide it by 10 and then you do a count star. Assuming that this is integer arithmetic, what did we say from input and then there's a group by number. So what this would do is it would of course reduce the number of groups by a factor of 10. So here you could expect the number of I.O. you perform is reduced by a factor of 10 as well. So the number of groups you create have a huge impact on the overall performance of such an algorithm of early grouping with aggregation. So keep in mind very often in query processing it makes sense to not run the algorithms one after the other. It makes sense to combine different algorithms and while doing that you can gain huge performance advantages. And how that works we will look at in the chapter on query optimization where we learn how to combine different query processing algorithms such as joins, joins with grouping and aggregation if you look at them in a holistic way, so if you combine those algorithms rather than executing them one after the other, you can actually gain a lot in terms of overall performance. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website Datenbankenlernen. .de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel Jens Did, or you look at our website infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there!